begin praising God Heavenly Father we thank you down the aisle where that seam is rolled it's anointed with power you're alive you're alive you're alive you're walking the aisles in the name of Jesus Lord right now set them free set them free you know I feel the Holy Ghost praise God sister can't come in just a minute I was sitting there you praise the Lord the Lord impressed me to lay hands on you and bless you right now raise both hands heavenly father i thank you for still these are great anointing these are real jesus 
and the Lord some of them has got an imitation but Lord she's got a real God and she's got one that's alive you're going to set her free and set her on fire and raise her up when the spirit of the Lord is going to come upon her and she'll be like Elijah and Elisha the power of God going to become there open up Sharon open up right now loosen up and let go free in the name of Jesus all over this place shout to victory shout to victory turn loose turn loose it's real go around this place go around this place come on go around this place tap your hands we're gonna have church we're gonna have church tap your hands i feel victory all is well in my soul Somebody give Jesus a hand clap. All is well. Can we have that testimony that all is well? If Jesus walked in and asked you right now, how is it with your soul? How is it with your soul? The most important question that man has ever asked is how is it with your soul? Let's just lift our hands up. Our gracious Heavenly Father, today we thank you because we can know when we have passed from death unto life. We can know when we've been born again. And Lord, as we go into this very important time of the year, the time that you paid the price and the time that you paid it in full, Lord, we thank you for all your goodness and your mercy today. Father, we ask you to touch hearts of men and women, boys and girls in this place today. Let us enter into this Easter season with a changed attitude and a changed 
mind and a changed heart father we ask you to strengthen the church today let those that are here today realize that there is a god and the god that's on the throne that he is for us and god we thank you for all that you're going to do in your holy name do we pray amen and amen you may be seated this morning as life without jesus christ we don't have anything and right before we get started with the sermon this morning i need to make a couple announcements uh and that was in the book of deuteronomy and it says if a man have committed a sin worthy of death he be put to death and thou hang him on a tree and romans 5 and 12 says wherefore as by one man sin, sin entered into the world and by death and so death passes upon all men for all have sinned that as death has reigned over that sin has reigned over death even so might the grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by jesus christ our lord in the book of deuteronomy it says he that have committed sin that is worthy of death he shall be hanged him on a tree unworthy am i of the grace that he gave unworthy to hold to his hand amazed that a king would reach down to a slave this love I cannot understand Unworthy I'm so unworthy A beggar In bondage and alone but Jesus made me worthy, and now by His grace, His mercy has made me His own. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans once again, you, you, the Bible says, that we all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. Romans 16, uh, 6 and 16 says, You know that to whom you did you yourself servants to obey, his service ye are to whom that you obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of, of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. The scripture says that there is two types of servants. A servant that obeys righteousness and a servant that, that, that obeys not righteousness. You either become a righteousness of death. Because if you begin to follow the, you know, the world and the things that are in the world. The Bible says that the things that are in the world is the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. As we begin to think about what's in the world. You begin to watch television. If you want to really know what's in the world and what will get you in trouble, you begin to watch television. On television, it, which it shows you that sin is fun and sin is good. But sin is not fun and sin is not good. For the Bible says you become a servant of sin. Sin will destroy you and sin will send you to hell. I don't care how, many, how big the sin is. You say, Brother Steve, I don't go out and rob a bank. I don't commit adultery. I don't you commit some of the sins you know, that you're talking about. But there's two different types of sin. There's a sin of omission and a sin of not doing. There's a sin of doing and a sin of not doing. There's a sin that God told you not to do something and you went ahead and done it. The Bible said to him that knoweth to do good and doeth if not it to him that is a sin. When you know that you should be doing something and you're not doing it, it is a sin. And the Bible said there is a penalty of sin. In the, in the Old Testament, the text that I read this morning, the Bible said if the, you know, for those that have committed those sins he said which, that you should be hung on a tree 
But we've got good news this morning. Jesus hung on the tree in our place. We don't have to hang on that tree. Don't care what the sin that you've committed. It might be a sin of omission that you did not do what God told you to do. It might be a sin that you committed on your own. You might have went out this weekend and done something that was terrible. Well, this morning, which God has got you here for a reason, got you here for appointment. It's not by accident that any of you are here. You're here for a reason. Because God is letting you to know you don't have to hang on the tree. Because whenever that you commit sin, and which in which in you, when you start doing the things that is unrighteousness, then darkness will come upon you. For sin will bring darkness into your life. I wish I could get off the death row. What are you in for? I'm in for stealing and cheating. I stole from my friends, taking things. Little things, but I took things that wasn't mine. What are I'm, you in for? I'm in for adultery and lust of the world. I'm in for lying and deceit and playing church. I had everybody fooled. I came to church every Sunday. I came to church every time the doors were open, but I fooled everybody except for the main one that counted was Jesus Christ. I come to you this morning to tell you that you don't have to die. Almost 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ died on the cross. He bore the sins of the world on His shoulders that we might be forgiven. I'm here to tell you today that your sins were pardoned by Jesus Christ carrying the load of the cross and dying for each and every one of us. You don't have to die today. Brother, what is it that you've done? I, through my life I cheated and stole. I took little things, but it was things that wasn't mine, and I, which I didn't think mattered because it was little things. Brother, those things that you've taken, they were forgiven by Jesus Christ. Jesus died for those sins. Before you even committed those sins, Jesus died for them. He died for those sins so that you might live. Brother, what is it that you've done? I've lied with the deceit, playing church. Lying, deceit, playing church. So many Christians today are playing church. But Jesus died for them also. He died for you, brother. You don't have to die today. I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ pardoned your sins. You can have life through Jesus Christ. Brother, what'd you do? I'm in for adultery and lust of the world. The devil had my eyes blinded and told me I could have anything. All I had to do was just, just go out and do it and worship Him. And here I am. Lust of the flesh, it gets so many. We get our eyes off of what God would have us to do and we get our eyes on the world and that causes us to fall short of the glory of God. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ died for each and every one of you. Today, you have to make a decision whether or not you'll choose God or whether or not you'll die in sin. Nothing in this world to keep you apart. What is your answer to Him? As Jesus that day, He took an old rugged cross. We all have heard the cross story over and over again. Each and every one of us could memorize from our heart how many times we've heard about the old rugged cross but what does a cross really mean to you did you ever really stop to think what Jesus actually done as he began to drag that old rugged cross and as under the weight the Bible says he began to fall first of all you got to realize that Christ was not just a weakling he was not just a little wimp because he would not have been able to pick up 390 pounds and drag it on his shoulder it got to the place until he could not carry it anymore. Simon, uh, which 
coming and, uh, and the Roman soldier said, help Jesus carry the cross. It got to the place that his knees were weak. First of all, he had not slept all night long. He had not had any sleep. The agony, you got to realize that the Roman soldiers and the Jews of that day and hour wanted to see how much shame they could put on Jesus. It was not that they were just going to kill another man, just hang another man on the tree. But you got to realize the Jews were upset at Jesus because Jesus had claimed to be the Son of God. They did not want to accept Jesus Christ because he was preaching things that was contrary to the law, contrary to what they wanted to believe. He was uh, preaching things that, that the people did not want to accept because they wanted to do things their own way. They wanted to have a form of godliness, but denying the power there within. The Bible says on that day as he began to walk down the road, the, the, the cobblestone road, and, and the weight began to, you begin to fall upon the, the shoulder, and which as he, when, when he would fall to his knees, and, which, and, which, and he would get back up, and, and the Roman soldier would take the whip and whip him, and say, go a little bit further, go a little bit further. But you got to realize Jesus did not have to do this thing. Jesus could have called 20,000 angels. Jesus could have spoke the word and say, Father, let this cup pass from me. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, thou will be done. I don't want it to be done what I would want to do because of the pain that I'm going through. But we got to realize Jesus carried the old rugged cross. And he took the old rugged cross and was hung upon the old rugged cross. He hung there. And as he hung there and, and began to bleed and died, why did he do it? He done it for me and for you. Well, what took place that afternoon on the, on, 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 on the hill they call Skull? The Bible says that as the, the Roman soldiers, they dropped the old cross and they took Jesus and they began to take Jesus and begin to whip Jesus with a whip. This is the type of whip that we usually know is, a, is kind of like a horse whip. This is the kind of whip as he began to whip Jesus over and over and over and over again. Just this type of a whip is a whip that hurt. Every time the cross began to sag a little bit. And you got to realize Jesus didn't have to do it. He done it because he loved me and you. He took the whip and he began to whip the whip and he began to you know, the Roman soldiers up across his back and 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 which and across his chest. The Bible says that that he could not have received any more than forty stripes, but instead the Bible says that he received. 39 stripes I believe uh, I was reading in one history book and it said he received 39 stripes across this shoulder 39 he received 13 stripes across this shoulder 13 across the right shoulder and then he received 13 across the left shoulder and they begin to turn him around and they begin to put 13 across his chest they put 39 stripes upon his body he took the limit of what a human man could take but this type of a whip is a whip that would hurt it was a whip that would hurt as the whip began to hit upon the body of Christ this type of a whip would hurt anybody but that's not the type of the whip that you know, that uh, that the Roman soldiers used they begin to use a whip like this it's called the cat of nine tails what is the cat of nine tails and if they will bring the camera in a little bit closer upon the end of the nine tails they were cut glass or broken pottery in order to make in flames upon his back to make his back to be more more than just like hamburger meat they begin to take that that glass and then and they begin to hit it but it was not just a swing of a hit that they begin to swing the Bible history says the man was when he was trained to do this it was the art for him to hit it at the right time to pull it back to see how much flesh that he could eat you know tear apart the Bible history shows us they were broken bones of all different types this is only chicken bone here but I think they probably had a big mule bone or he had some type of a, of a cattle bone something that was heavy so that whenever they would swing the old the old whip that it would just tear the flesh up on the back the Bible history shows us there was broken metal and cut metal of all different sorts and you say well why did he do it he done it because he loved me and you as he laid there he did not say a word the Bible tells us that he did not open up a word but he received the stripes and, and every time it would he it, it was his body and the muscles would reflect in his body and
and he would cry on the inside but he knew they had to be a pain every time the Roman soldier would hit him and every time the, you know, the Roman soldier would bring his weight down upon his body flesh and blood would fall and fly everywhere why did he do it why did he receive the 39 stripes for me and for you because it was a penalty the Bible said so whosoever has committed a sin that is worthy of death he should hang on the tree and the Heavenly Father knew that there was no way for me and you to be able to hang on a tree we all have committed those sins that are sins of death which is the worst sin I, I can tell you the Bible said sin will send you to hell is it the sin of, of adultery oh yes it's bad is it the sin of blasphemy yes it's bad is it the sin of not going to church yes that's bad well brother Steve what took place on that afternoon after they begin to lay 39 stripes upon his back the Bible history shows us they took a big old rusted nail took a big old nail and begin to drive it into the feet of Jesus and into the into the hands or into the wrist of Jesus just the pain why did they put it into the wrist because they wanted to inflate pain upon the body they would take and they would strip Jesus naked and as he hung there weeping and crying not you know, he was weeping and crying for his pain he said women don't weep for me you need to weep for yourself because you're still in this world I'm getting out of this world and I'm doing the will of my father Jesus seen the pain that me and you would have to go through but he said I'm going to take care of the pain I'm going to take care of the sin and as this nails begin to be driven into his hands and into his feet hallelujah it was not just a beautiful sight it was not nothing like you've ever seen betrayed on television we've all seen the crucifixion of Jesus but the Bible history shows us as they begin to take the old rugged cross and then and, and the Roman soldiers took the nails of the old rugged cross and he began to drive the nails something like this into the hands of Jesus Christ Blessed Redeemer, precious Redeemer, seems now I see on Calvary's tree, wounded and bleeding for sinners. Roman soldier got pleasure out of putting Jesus on the old rugged cross as he as he, he laid there the Bible said they kicked at him and they spit at him and they begin to ridicule him in a way that we have never been ridiculed before the Bible history begins to show us something took place the Bible history begins to tell us and the Word of God proclaims that as they nailed Jesus to the old rugged cross they took the old rugged cross into a hole that is about a foot deep. And the Roman soldiers with Jesus hanging on the cross would stand the cross straight up and down. And as the old cross was stood straight up and down with the body of Jesus laying on the inside of it. They would pick the body up, you know, pick the whole cross up and they would begin to drop it down into the holes. And, and as they lift it up about a foot high and they would drop it down into the hole, his body would begin to tear his body and his hands would begin to tear the blood would, you would begin to glush and to run out the Bible says that they hung him on the cross and they hung him beside two old thieves it would be bad enough to be hung on the cross to, but to be hung by two thieves and one says if you be the Lord save yourself and and the other one he knew that Jesus Christ was Lord because he had not committed any sin as his body began to rip and tell the Bible history begins to tell us that it could go for sometimes three and four to six to seven days of them hanging on the cross they it was just not them just crucifying or, or executing a person and they would have instant death 
it was the idea of the body hanging on the cross for days. The sun would beat down upon the flesh and the flesh would dry and dehydrate and the flesh would dry up and the birds would sit around waiting for those that would die so that they could come and eat the flesh off of the bones as they were on the cross. But we got to realize Jesus didn't have to do none of this. You say, Brother Steve, why did he do it? He done it because he loved me and you. And more than this, he was not, we were not worthy that he should die in our place. We was not worthy because it should have been us that died instead of Jesus Christ. We should have been crucified instead of Jesus Christ. But Jesus said, I'll take your place up on Calvary. I'll hang and I'll die on Calvary. As he began to hang there that day and the sun was beating down the day was fast farly spent and they went over and they began to look at the, the, the thieves and they said we must kill them because the, because the holy day is coming up and we can't have anybody hanging on the cross the Bible says they went up to the first thief and he was not dead so he broke his leg so that he would die and, which, and, and, and the fluids built up in his lungs and he would suffocate on the inside and he would drown himself because he could not stand back up to get any breath his body would hang and suffocate he went to the other thief and the other thief was still alive and the Bible said they went to Jesus Christ and was going to break his leg but God had already said ahead of time my boy's legs shall not be broken they shall not be a broken bone in his body and as they begin to look to Jesus and, and, and out of his side they begin to see water and blood running out of his side they looked to Jesus but they did not break his leg why because he said I'm hanging here and no man took of my life but I laid it down and the Bible said the heavenly father opened up the heavens above and the Bible said that the heavens began begin to ring out God was very proud of his son Jesus Christ is proud because he laid his life down and I don't understand the world that we're living in we used to worry about the blood of Jesus Christ we used to worry about sin we used to worry about doing things wrong and we used to worry about just making heaven our home but we live in a society today it says whatever makes you feel good you do it but that's not so what are you going to do with the old rugged cross and what are you going to do with the blood of Jesus Christ for the blood of Jesus Christ was shed on Calvary you can't get around the blood you may get around a lot of things in life but you cannot get around the blood of Jesus Christ the blood of Jesus Christ is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword the Bible says as he began to hang there on Calvary, the earth began to shake because of the earthquake. And the Bible says there become a great darkness up on the face of the earth. And when the darkness began to flow, the Bible said there was thunder and they were lightning all across the face of the earth. hanging on the cross today and it should have been me and you hanging on the cross today but as Jesus hung there hung there on the cross on the cross in this grave but Jesus hallelujah son oh hallelujah when Jesus hung on the cross he done it my place. The scripture says everyone that's committed a sin is worthy of death. Where are you at today? The most important question I asked you. Where are you at today? Where is your spiritualism today? Where is your heart at today? Where is your heart at today? Where is your heart at today? Jesus hung in our place. Jesus hung in our place. Jesus, whenever he went away, as the spotlight comes on me, as Jesus went away, he said, I'm coming again. He's coming for me and for you. Are you ready? Are you ready? You say, I'm not ready to give up what I'm doing. I'm too young. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Just like he told him in the city of Jerusalem, I'm going to be crucified. He told Peter, said, Peter, I'm going to a place you cannot go. 
Peter said, anywhere you go, I'll go where you go, Jesus. He said, but I'm going to a place you can't go right now. i got to go make some things right for you. I want you to come after me. Where are you at this morning, church? Where are you at this morning? The old rugged cross made the difference for me and for you. Whenever you begin to look at the old rugged cross and the cross this morning, you see the cross is empty. There's no one on the cross. You know why? Jesus said, I was on the cross and you was on my mind when I was on the cross. I laid and I died on Calvary. I, I died on Calvary for your sin and for my sin. What are you going to do with Jesus this morning? What are you going to do with the blood of Jesus Christ? What are you going to do with the nail scars that are in your hands? What In his hands, what are you going to do this morning? Are you going to just say it's just another Easter sermon and I'm going to let it pass by? You that's watching on the, my television, what are you going to do by Jesus? What are you going to do about the blood of Jesus Christ? You that's sitting here this morning, what are you going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do with Jesus? I tell you what I'm going to do with him. I'm going to reach out just like Dalton Thomas was and say, my Lord and my God, I'm going to recognize him as my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want everybody to stand to your feet this morning. Hallelujah. I should have been cruised while the cross comes on me. I should have been crucified. You should have been crucified. I should. I should. I should have died instead of Jesus. I should have been the one that died. I should. What are you going to do with Jesus this morning? While some lights come on through the in the building this morning. What are you going to do with Jesus Christ? going to do with the blood this morning I, I'm going to ask a serious question what are you going to do with the blood this morning are you going to push it to the side and say there's nothing in it are you going to accept the blood of Jesus Christ why brother Ralph sings this one more time I want everybody here to lift up your hands and begin to worship that's enough of lights Marvin begin to lift up your hands and worship God begin to lift up your hands and invite Jesus What are you going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do with Jesus? Some of you were in prison and some of you are still in prison today. Some of you know you got sin in your life. <laughs> oh, we can't go to heaven with sin. You say, my life is falling apart. I can't make it anymore. The devil's got me in his claw and I cannot, cannot, I cannot get out of his claw. I want you this morning to say, Brother Steve, I'm not for sure if I'm saved. I'm not for sure that the blood of Jesus is covering me. I want you to come. I believe there's many here. Teenagers need to come this morning. There's men and women, mamas and daddies. And I believe as some of you begin to walk the aisles of me, other people will follow you. I want everybody in saints of God just lift your hands up. Happy cruise. It should have been you on the cross this morning. You should have been on the cross this morning. But you're not on the cross. Jesus said, I took your place. Jesus is calling some of you this morning. You cannot run any further from God. There's some of you, your world has fallen, fell apart. Your world is falling apart. You can't get up from under the blood. Some of you say, Brother Steve, I once knew what the blood was. I once knew what the power of Jesus was. I want, I want you to say that again. I want everyone just to lift your hands and total surrender unto God. Total surrender unto the blood of Jesus Christ. There's some of you, you need to come. Don't let the devil cheat you out of it. They're, they're already coming. There's some more of them you need to come. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. You need to come. You need to come. I should. It should have been me and you. It should have been me and you. While the saints are praying. While the saints are praying. There's some of you sitting here saying, I don't want to give up. I can't let go of the world. You better let go of the world. The devil's got you in prison. The devil's got you in the jaws of death. And you're on your way to hell this morning. Don't run from the blood. Don't run from the blood. Don't run from the blood. We're going
going to sing this one more time. I feel, I feel it, I, and I know who you are, but I can't you got to. I know who you are this morning. You need Jesus. I know who you are this morning. You need Jesus. But you've got to come. There's teenagers here this morning. Only because of the blood of Jesus Christ, you're here today. Only because Mama prayed, you're here today. Only because the church stood with you, you're here today. But don't walk out of these doors not knowing who Jesus is. Not knowing that Jesus hung on the cross. It should have been you. We're going to sing this one more time. I just feel the Holy Ghost draws. The Holy Ghost speak to the hearts. Devil, get your hands up on those lives. We speak salvation this morning. We speak life for the devil spoke death. Jesus. sure you're really not for sure be a strong man and come be a real woman and walk the aisle you say are you begging me yes i'm pleading with you your life is at stake this morning <laughs> there's some of you standing right where you are and the holy ghost is telling you to come the holy ghost is telling you to come jesus is telling you to come oh i can't do any more than i've done jesus is waiting for you jesus cannot do any more than he's done he's waiting on you we're gonna i'm gonna count the three this morning you said you've never i've never done this before but i feel jesus is calling some of you this morning one jesus is coming are you ready are you covered by the blood of jesus christ are you ready do you know your name is in the lamb's book of life two hallelujah you need to say brother steve i'm not for sure if i'm ready or not you don't need to let anybody stand in your way you need to be down here if you're not for sure the blood of jesus is covering and you need to be here this morning hallelujah i'm getting ready to say three are you sure are you sure are you sure you say people's looking at me i would care i don't care what people say i must be born again to see jesus you must be born again to see jesus you must be born again you must be born again i feel something here this morning i feel it i feel it i feel it i want every saint of god just to lift up your hand and claim claim those souls you cannot run god god said you can't outrun me god said you can't outrun me Right before I say three, if you're not for sure the person beside you saved, reach over and ask them if they're saved. Reach over and ask them. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Reach over and ask them, are they saved? The earth begin to shake. Thunder and lightning on that day. Only when the blood begin to hit the earth. Jesus took our place. We're going to sing that one more time. And at the end of this song, it could be the last song you ever hear. You better listen to me, mom and dad. At the end of the song, could be the last song you ever hear. <laughs> you say, I got money in the bank. I got a good education. I've got my life ahead of me and everything's going good. What's going to happen when your heart quits beating? What's going to happen when sudden destruction comes on your life and you have to meet Jesus face to face? And Jesus says, what did you do with the sermon on Sunday morning of April the 2nd? What did you do with my blood? You rejected my blood. Cast him into everlasting darkness. Don't say no to Jesus. Don't say no to Jesus. Don't say no to Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Three. I want everybody from the front of this building to the back of this building. No one leaving. Saints of God, let's get around these that want Jesus. Let's get around these that need Jesus. Prayer partners, we need you to find somebody to pray with. They need the blood of Jesus. 
Lord, I see so many teenagers and young folks. They need Jesus. They need Jesus this morning. Don't just stand there. Find somebody to pray with. Get in front of them. Get your arm around them. Let them know what the blood of Jesus will do. Let them know what the blood of Jesus will do. Mama, get around that boy. Mama, get around that girl. <laughs> as Jesus, as Jesus hung on the cross, his flesh was tearing apart. He didn't have to. He didn't have to. Oh, oh thank you, Jesus. I <laughs> Oh, saints of God, I need people to help us pray. I need people to help us pray today. Saints of God, find your way to up here to find someone to pray with. We must lead them to Jesus. We must tell them Jesus cares. We must tell them Jesus died on the cross. Saints of God, I need you to help us pray. God, I still need somebody that knows how to pray. I've suffered and died. Oh, we've already seen this morning how Jesus loved us. He loved us so much until he laid his life down. He laid his life down. But Jesus, Jesus. I still need some more prayer partners. Come and put your arm around them. Tell them Jesus loves them. I should have been crucified. I should have suffered and died. I should have hung on the cross in this grave, but Jesus, God's Son, Lord Jesus, we thank you today. I need somebody to help me pray this morning. I need somebody to help me pray. Jesus is calling this. I said, Jesus is calling this morning, church. I said, Jesus is calling this morning, church. Oh, he was there. What are you going to do with the blood? Are you just playing church? Are you just going through the formalities? What are you going to do with the blood? Church, 